that, that means you're listening to someone else's story. So that's the one I'm bringing to you today, my story. My autobiography. My autobiography is the biography you guys will be listening to. So making the 2008 Olympics, I didn't just come out of my mom's womb and make the team. I had a process. I had to go through a long journey to get where I am today. But it was a long and it was a cool journey. When I was four years old, that's when I knew that I was going to be a star. And you're probably like, well, how do you know that at four? But I knew that at four because that was when I met Mr. B. So who's Mr. B? He's this gym teacher that comes out and he's like, hey, hey, hey. That's what he does every day. And it's actually kind of weird now that I think about it, but as a kindergartner, like, it was the most awesome thing that I could have anticipated going to school and expecting. But what's special about Mr. B was when I was in this school, I remember this, I was in the gym and I looked up at the wall and there was a banner, like the red one that's up there, and it said, Vinny Testaverde. And I said, Mr. B, how do I get my name on the wall? I want my name on the wall. And he said, well, baby girl, you gotta be a star in order to get your name on the wall. So I was like, well, I'm a star then. And he was like, no, it doesn't work like that. It's not that easy. So I said, okay, well, well what do I need to do? And then he was just like, you have to find something that you're good at and when you find what you're good at, you work at it every day. You never give up, and you continue to work every day, and, when, and eventually, then you will become successful. You will become a star, but you can't give up. So what did he say? When you, when you work at what? When you find something you're good at, oh. you find something you're good at, you work at it, work at it, every, at it every, every day, you never give up, and then you'll be successful. So that trait, that trend is gonna come up a lot. So I'm gonna keep asking you. So that's something to remember. So this is really where the story begins. My mom sacrificed her life and everything because she wanted me to have an opportunity. So what is also important in order to achieve your dreams? Sacrifice, sacrifice, support. My mom was that for me. I was born in Florida and both my parents are Jamaican. So my mom came up here and she had me, this, this happened on vacation. But because she had me on vacation in Florida, I was offered this opportunity to also be an American citizen. So I'm an American citizen, but I have Jamaican parents. So eventually her and my father split and then she ends up migrating to New York. She works extremely hard as a, you know, cleaning individuals' houses, as a housemaid and a certified nurse's assistant, she went back and got her certi certification so she could become a nurse. And she worked extremely hard to be able to provide for me. So that four-year-old girl now goes to school knowing and seeing my mom work so hard and hear that, hears that I could become a star one day. So I'm so excited. So field day comes around and I entered all the races that I could enter and then I get out there on the field, I'm running, I'm running, and I win my every race competition. I beat the boys and the girls in the competition. So I come back the next day and I said, Mr. B, that sign on the wall, that's supposed to be my name. And he just laughed. He said, baby girl, you are a star, but you have to go through the process in order to get your name on the wall. So that being said, what did I have to do? He said, I was like, well, I need you to tell me exactly because you're confusing me now. That's, not, that's what I said to Mr. B. He's looking at me and he's laughing. And then I, he said, you need to go through college, you need to go to high school, you need to do well in elementary school, then you need to go do well in high school, and then you need to do really well in college, and then you will keep working hard, and then eventually you will be a star. So that being said, I was, you know, I went for being president in elementary school and I won that and like I worked on the newspaper club, and I worked on other, you know, I played softball, I played volleyball, I played basketball. I did every sport you could imagine in elementary school. And then I get to seventh grade. Seventh grade is like the amazing grade, and I'm not just saying that because I'm in front of you seventh graders. But it is a great grade because this is the beginning of putting action to the things that you actually want to do. Once you get to that 13 year old, that's when you're starting able to potentially get some internships or potentially work some places for individuals. That's when you can start 
you know, really doing overnight camps and clubs and, and all those different things. So it's putting yourselves out there. So this is a great age. This is a great time to start figuring out what you want to do. If you don't know it yet, working hard at it. So this way you will be successful. So seventh grade for me comes around and I'm still doing track. I'm still doing volleyball. Well, not track. I'm volleyball, softball, basketball. And run for president. I'm the president for my class. Now I move on to ninth grade. We're going to skip eighth grade because eighth grade I just did the same thing in seventh grade um, and worked hard. Ninth grade now, that's the beginning of high school. That's also another step. We go from junior varsity to varsity. This was my opportunity to show everyone that I'm going to be a star. So I worked hard. I was still the president of my class. I still was on Future Business Leaders of America. Um, leadership, leader, like different honor, like honors courses. I was doing a lot of different things. I did this also because my mom sacrificed so much for me that this was my opportunity to give back to her. This was my opportunity to get myself involved because she didn't have the money to send me to whether finding a babysitter, or doing this, or finding places for me to go. So by me being so active, I was giving her time to do what she needed to do to be able to come and get me. It was an underlying reason for all of the things that I did. But it was also an opportunity to just make her proud because I knew that if I had a lot of things on my resume, if I had a lot of things that I was doing and I was good at it, then it was going to make it easier for me to get a scholarship. scholarship to go to college. And what did Mr. B said I needed to do? He said I needed to find out exactly I needed to find something that I'm good at work hard at it and I need to do it in elementary school high school and college. and college so this was my opportunity now to do that so ninth grade tenth grade eleventh grade I'm still doing all these sports but then eventually in eleventh grade something happens between being the president and playing basketball there were issues Playing basketball, I fouled out every game. I was not that great of a basketball player, but I was a really good president. And because these schedules were, cons were conflicting, what do you think that I had to give up? Basketball. basketball. So I gave up basketball, but I wanted to do something to keep me in shape for softball and volleyball because I was good at that. So that's when I did track. track. Exactly. You guys are smart. You guys are a smart bunch. So I did track. But I started off with track as a runner because, you know, even though I was this 230 pound junior in high school, as, you know, I was a very big girl. A lot of people were like, Zara, you should throw the shot put. I was like, I'm not throwing the shot put. That's not cool. That's, that's not, I didn't think it was a cool event. So I wanted to do the running events because that's what was cool. The girls were fast and, you know, everybody cheered all the time and there was always a big crowd. That's what I was gonna do, but no. And what ended up happening was I started coming in last on the track. I was jumping like 13 feet and while people were jumping 15 feet. But this is still what I wanted to do. So friends came out and she was doing track. She was doing shot put. So she said, Sarah, well, I know you don't want to do this, but can you please help me so I can do the shot put relay? You need two people in order to do that. So everybody's throwing like 24 feet, 25 feet. So then I come out, and my first time ever throwing, I throw 32 feet. So then the coach is like, well, Zara, you don't need to practice, but this is what you're doing. And I'm thinking, man, why I got to be good at something I don't even like? <laughs> but what did Mr. B say? <clears throat> find something that I'm good at, you got to work hard at it, and when you work hard at it, that's when you'll eventually become a star. And like you said, like anything I want to do, I can do. And that's exactly what I did. That is when my life started to change. That 32 feet turned into 33.10. The 33.10 turned into 37, 37 feet. And I won my county championships, and then I went to states. I went to states thinking, this girl, I'm, I'm the best one out there. I'm doing it now. Like, I hardly ever really practice, but this, I'm natural at this. So I get there, and I compete. What do you think happened? No. I lost. I came in third place. Was I a loser, though? No. No. I was someone that had a talent. I brought it as far as I did, and I came in third place. And this is my junior year. 
this summer comes around and I all of a sudden start getting letters sent to my house, a contract that says, here's basically $35,000 for you to come to our school because of track, a sport that I just started doing a couple months ago. And so my mom was ready to sign it and send it back. But sports is what I want to work in. So I actually knew some rules and some things I had to do. So I started to do my own research because being inquisitive is also important. Being curious is not a bad thing because you have to question and you ask questions and when you ask questions, you learn, you learn. So what ended up happening was I started asking questions. I realized, okay, well, they're offering me a scholarship then I must be good enough to get a scholarship almost anywhere. Or in my thought, at that point, I said I could get a scholarship anywhere. I didn't think I could, I thought, I knew I could. But no, that wasn't the case. So I sent off my portfolio. I put together my resumes, I put together the newspaper articles, and I started sending some things out. And then I got replies back saying, well, you're not growing far enough. <sighs> wow, like, they broke my little heart. But did I give up? No. No, I couldn't give up. I tried harder. I tried harder. You know what? You're, you're very animated today. Oh, I like you it. Can. You get a bracelet. Look at me. Don't worry, there'll be opportunities, other opportunities. So I tried harder. I got to the point of my my senior year comes around and I started working with Miss Mallon. Miss Mallon was my volleyball coach. And we're working together and I said, Miss Mallon, well, I want to go to college and I want to be able to go to the college that I want to go to. So we lifted, I trained, I worked over the summer. The summer is no school, so I didn't have to do it, but I decided to work hard over the summer to prepare myself. My first time at competing my senior year, I threw 42 feet. I broke the school record, and I ended up winning the Bishop Laughlin Games, which was a big game in New York City. That being said, I was out of position now to start riding these same schools that said that I wasn't throwing far enough and tell them I'm throwing further. But they still came back and said, well, you need to throw 44-10 to really be considered for a full scholarship. So I still wasn't there yet. So what did I do? I tried harder. So now I threw 46-7 to take home my state championship and then move on to actually win. Um, I actually placed second at the nationals where I became a high school All-American. And at that point I had wrote Northeastern University because that's the school that I wanted to go to in Boston because they have a really cool program where I get to go to school for six months and then I have an internship for six months. And I had really looked into it and that's where I wanted to be. So without a doubt, they weren't a big athletic school at the time, so therefore they were like, well, definitely, you could be at Florida State, you could be at LSU, but you're choosing to come here and they offered me a full scholarship. So a $200,000 education now was paid for by this iron ball called a shot put that I throw as far as I can. So do you think, I don't really like it, but do you think I'm going to stop? No. Why? You come so far. far. You come so far. I come so far and I found the thing that I was good at. So now, like Mr. B says, I'm going to go on to college. I go on to college. It's 2003. I want to make nationals. At this stage, I'm thinking I'm the best. Like, you know, like I've, I've done all of this. I've just started. I want to make nationals, coach. I've thrown 46-7. He looks at me and laughs, and he's like, you didn't even throw 47 feet yet. And these girls are throwing like 55, and you need at least 52 feet. So my freshman year of college, I throw 52-10. And I make the national competition. I go there as the youngest freshman at North, well, youngest freshman, youngest individual period in the nation to make that year's, uh, that year's national championship, but I was the first individual from Northeastern to make the national championships. So I'm thinking, this is great. I'm about to go in here. I'm going to make finals. I'm going to come home with a medal. Did that happen? No. No, no, I didn't even make finals. But I was there. I was happy I was there. And then an opportunity presented itself because I wanted my dad to see me compete. He lives in Jamaica. I'd never been to, like, he's never come up here to see me compete. So I found a competition in Jamaica to compete in. And I did, and I broke the national junior record when I was there. Two weeks later, your American becomes a Jamaican. I become Jamaican and American, and I get my dual citizenship. And I'm staying there, and I'm competing, and then I get the opportunity to go to the Pan American Games in Barbados, where I actually brought home one of Jamaica's first medals in the shot put because I came in second. 
So this is all amazing. This is this great grand story, and I'm on this high, and now I'm coming back to my my um my sophomore year thinking, well, I'm about to be an All-American now. I've worked this hard. I've gotten this far. And then what do you think happens? I didn't make it. I didn't even make nationals. I was throwing 53 feet consistently last year. Now I'm not. I'm throwing 50 feet. Do I give up? No. No, I can't give up. Got to keep working. So this same year was the year of the Olympics, the 2004 Olympic Games that was going to be in Athens. I'm going to make that team. I need to throw 57 feet. I've only thrown 53 feet, but I'm going to make the 2007 Games. Do you think I made it? No. No, but I definitely worked hard to get there, and I did end up throwing 53 feet that year, so I got a little bit past the 52 where I was. Um, but one of the things did one of the things that I did do was when I was in Jamaica, I ended up getting an opportunity to work as an intern for the JIS branch, which branch, which is the Jamaica Information Service, basically like the Prime Minister's media house, like radio station. A lot of the the country's information comes through that branch. So when I was there, I actually did the Olympic updates for the Jamaica. So doing articles and interviews with Danny McFarland, who at the time had won the 400 hurdles for Jamaica, Usain Bolt, people like Veronica Campbell, amazing athletes. I was interviewing them. So even though I wasn't in the Olympics, I was a part of the Olympics. And I was able to get this exposure now because I'm, being in, I'm involved with the communication branch in Jamaica. I'm making myself more at home because now I had to live there for six months. So it was a perfect opportunity to get closer to my family and to continue to further my education and still be a part of track and field. So now I'm back. 2005 passes, 2006 passes, and 2000, I'm still throwing the 53 feet. I still didn't make national. Do I give up? No. no. Try harder. I try harder. You're so right. So I get to the point where 2006 has come around. The school record at Northeastern is 54 3. And I want it so bad, I, and I kept, like, I stressed myself out to the point where I wanted it and never got it. But I'm in Texas at this competition, and my mom used to always say, Zara, you just have to breathe, you have to relax, because you have what it takes. So my first throw, like 49 feet. My second throw, like 51 feet. I didn't even make finals. Like I, I, like, I was at the point of not making finals, but I had one more throw. So I literally lay down on the ground, and I look up in the sky. Mind you, the record holder, from Northeastern is sitting in the stands next to the my coach, which is her coach. Like, who was her coach? The record was there from 1984. And at that point, I was, tw you know, so it was a 20-year-old record. So I'm working with her, and while well, I'm in the competition, so now I get up and I throw, and I threw 54-6. I break the record. I see her jumping. I see my coach all excited. This was one of my most memorable moments because my coach, and the former record holders were there to watch me break this record. So now I'm all like geeked. I'm excited. I'm about to go to nationals. I broke my school record. Things are going to be good. I get to nationals. What do you think happens? Yeah. Actually, I didn't place, but I made it to finals this time around. So I was, yes, I was bummed. I was devastated. But this is now 2007. What's going to happen in 2008? Olympics. Olympics. So I'm, do I give up because I didn't make nationals? No. 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 You tried harder. I tried harder. So I get to the point. I go to, you know, 2008 comes around. I'm training. I get a job because I graduated in 2007. So $40,000 job, Northeastern, excited. That's a great opportunity. But I, what, what, if I'm not in school anymore and I technically don't have a coach, then what do I got to figure out? I got to figure out how to train. I even I got to figure out like how I'm going to train, when I'm going to train, how I'm going to support myself. So I have this job, which is cool, but with a job, what's the difference between a job and school? You, you, you get paid job. for doing you get it. Paid for a job. Exactly, you get paid to do the job, and but then the job is also from eight, pretty much eight to five o'clock, from eight thirty to five thirty. I had to be in one place, so I'm in this one place, and that means I had to lift at five o'clock in the morning. Now I have to find a coach that's willing to help and support me because sacrifice, help, and support are keys in order to achieve your dreams. That's why you have to surround yourself with positive people. But I found a coach that works with me in the morning. I found my coach that, that worked with me after work at 5.30 when I left. So from 5 in the morning to like 9 o'clock at night, I was pretty much working 
whether it was on my dream or whether it was actually at work. I end up bulge, getting a bulging disc, my L5 S1. At this stage, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? It's two, the beginning of 2007, the Olympics are coming up, and now I find out that I'm injured. What do you think I did? You tried. You tried, you tried, you tried I tried harder, but trying harder doesn't mean you, you, you neglect the things that you're doing. It means that you have to then start to try smarter. And I started to figure out things that I could do in order to help myself still overcome my adversity now with this injury. So I worked, I communicated with my strength coach, explained to them what was going on. I went to the best doctors in Boston and then ended up meeting a chiropractor that does like some um, multi, like some muscle thing that was able to actually help out. And my back got better and my distances started to come back. I wasn't doing the heavy weights. I wasn't lifting the 525 pound deadlifts or the 435 pound squats or the 225 pound benches anymore. But I was doing things to strengthen the weakest muscle because my former strength coach used to say, you're only as strong as your weakest muscle. So, and I was, became patient with myself. I practiced my technique more and more. So eventually now I've become to the point where I end up throwing 55 feet. So I'm getting closer because remember now I need 57. So I look at that like, man, I had this bulging disc. I went through that. Like, I'm about to be great. Like, I went to Florida, went in my meets. I'm doing great. What do you think happens? Something, else. Something else. I got injured. I tore my meniscus. So now, what do you think that I, what do you think I do after this? I went back to the chiropractor to do it, but it didn't help it completely because I actually tore it this time. Like, I tore it. So I had to look out my options, and I decided that I could actually compete with this pain for a period of time and then just wait to have surgery. So I withstood pain for, uh, this happened probably in like March, so from March all the way until, I didn't have surgery until the following December, oh no, the following October, I actually dealt with this, this pain but I worked hard. We ended up finding ways like these bands to put over the legs to kind of sort of cut off the circulation so that I wouldn't feel the pain as much. We started doing things because we knew that if we could come together to create a plan, but I couldn't do this on my own. I needed my athletic trainer. I needed my, my coach. I needed my mom. I needed, I needed all these people on my side. I used my surroundings, the positive people around me to, to end up putting things together so this way I could make the 2008 Olympic team. So now June 7, 2008 comes around. I'm all excited. I go to New York for a competition, and guess who's there? Hey, hey, hey! Mr. B. Mr. B shows up, and I'm super excited. I see Mr. B. I see Miss Mallon. I see my high school, you know, friends, family. What do you think happens? One. I do 57-7. And I made the Olympic standard that day. The newspapers were there, some people from Jamaica were there, so I was able to put that media out there. So, but do you think, do you think that's it? Do you no. think it's just no. that easy? No. no. It's definitely not that easy. I get to the point now, I gotta go to my Olympic trials, I go to my Olympic trials, and I make, uh, and I win. I win the Olympic trials. I think it's good, I think I'm all good, but is it all good? No. No, something else, of course, has to happen. I get there, and it turns out, that for whatever reason, my country decided to not put me on the team. They decided to not put me on the list, and I'm devastated. I worked so hard. I actually got the standard this time. I put my heart, soul, my own expenses, sweat, and tears into this. So what did I do? You went to Jamaica. Kept trying. I kept, the, at that point, I made it. So, so now I started to work smarter. I worked smarter because now I utilize the fact that I was in the communication branch of the Prime Minister's office. I worked with JIS. I used the media to my advantage to tell the people what was going on because I was going to need someone to stand up for me. So individuals that were around me then started to say, well, why is Zara not on the team? Then they tried to say that the meat that I threw 57, I didn't count. So I ended up calling the United States of America, the USOC, and the USATF, and they were able to verify that I threw what I was supposed to throw, throw, and what ended up happening? I got on the team. So I'm on the team, I'm so excited, I'm on the plane, I'm going to Tianjin, China, because that's where the, the training camp was. I get off the plane, we get to practice, 
and then all of a sudden I'm contained by this Chinese security because my name is not on the list. I don't know what happened, I don't know why it happened, but do I let that continue to get no. me down? No. no, I kept working hard because I knew what I was good at, I knew that I deserved it, and I was going to be a star. So I never let the different things that took place, the adversities that were affecting me, the obstacles, I never let that keep me down because I worked too hard to get there, and now I was actually there, and actually if I'm contained by the Chinese in security, I'm not going anywhere. So I had to wait to get the help that I needed. I came, and I get to the Olympic Stadium, and it's the most amazing moment ever. I'm seeing 90,000 people all around me screaming, and I see these people pointing, like, like it was like this crazy woman in the stands. This lady wearing some bright teal pants and a yellow shirt, screaming, Zara! I look up, and it's my mom. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe she's left the United States and she's come here. It's embarrassing, but it was real. It made me realize at that moment that this meat is no different than any other meat. That this obstacle, this dream came true, and it came true, why? Because you kept trying harder. Because I tried harder, I never gave up. I found something I was good at, and it happened. It happened. I became a star, because I had not only my mother, but I had all sorts of people that I didn't even know in this stand cheering for me, because I was the shortest and the smallest thrower in the field. The girl that ended up winning the Olympics, she's about 6'5", I want to say probably definitely over 260 pounds. She's this, and she's amazing. She's a great person. But you know I mean like I was David at that point, and she was Goliath, and I was going in for a win. But did I win? No. no. But did I win? Yes. 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 Because that day I became a star, a star. and that is my story. That's my story.